a sharp wind. Where a sharp wind. Peekaboo! Alright, so today I have a groundbreaking tutorial for you guys. You're gonna love this. It was suggested on my Discord server and voted instantly. And today we have the realistic glitches tutorial. Ooh. So buckle up because this one is not easy. The video is probably very long, but I don't know yet because I've just begun recording. But this is a pretty hard topic, so I'm assuming it is. That's so why I want to ask you to show me your support by clicking the subscribe button and liking the video. If, of course, you do. Now brace yourselves because we're about to start. Attention, I'm premiering my biggest animation project yet. The Buy it for. Click the link in the description for more information. You should totally join us at the premiere. Okay, yeah, whatever that was, divided. We're in my meter already, because I want to do this instantly. First off, I want to make a new camera. This is going to be my main camera, and this time I want to name it Main Camera. Because we're going to be using a lot of cameras, and I want to name them so I know what is what. Then, I want to add a new surface, and call it Reflect. And lock this Reflect onto the main camera. First of all, put the rotation point to 0, 0, 0, which means it's in the center. This Reflect should be right in the center of the video, equally away from all disturbing factors and stuff. So what I want to do is open up the project and click the full HD format. This is the 180p, the best quality on YouTube before 2K and 4K came out. What's important to know is that this is the natural ratio between the human eyes. 1920 times 1080. Yeah, English. <laughs> this is equal to 16 by 9, or 1 versus 1.78. If you don't believe me, I can use the calculator right now. Here we go, and type in... And as you see, you get 1.78. We want the same ratio with this square. Open up the scale value in 1.78. Now the ratio is just right. What I want to do next is move this reflect to be just in front of the camera, which is exactly 1915. Let's just go for round numbers. This is it. Add a new camera. I'm gonna name it Glitch1. By the way, the newest Miamino version is required for this. And that's 1.2.2. It is required, so be careful about that. Lock the glitch camera onto the reflect one and put all of its values to zero which means position rotation all being zero and also make it invisible because that's gonna interfere with our plans also name the reflect in the timeline not in the library in the timeline glitch one so you always know what this is scroll down and in the texture panel of the glitch one there should be an option to choose from the cameras go for glitch one that's what I want however don't change the texture in the library because that will ruin everything it's important to change the texture from the timeline what you can do do though this is turned the wrong way so you can go for invert now glitch one should have a brightness of one so this plane not the camera but the plane should have a brightness of 100% what have I done with this the main camera is recording the scenery in front of it and the glitch one is positioned in the frame and it's recording the back of the scenery which is being projected on the plane behind it and that is what the main camera is seeing if I rotate the main camera I'm still going to see everything normally because all the components move with it so your view is not obstructed by anything but why I need this plane you will see in a second from now on this will require previous knowledge about the alpha glitch you should click the ionic corner to see it right now because the alpha glitch is a very important component of this mechanic I am going to hide certain parts of this camera and only make it visible like let's say I want to make an imperfect shape in the corner visible from this glitch one and the rest will be visible by the main camera not the glitch one secondly you'll have to know about item reflections which I've done before that and it's not 100% fixed but it's pretty close I don't think it will matter in glitches though because glitches are supposed to be distorted and not correct so I think this will work fine like I recommend those two tutorials before watching this because this is seriously worth it next I want to open an item sheet and I have a bunch of presets here which will be linked in the description for you to download yourself don't worry I have all the different presets and I recommend going for a 16 by 16 on an 8 by 8 square so copy that paste it on the desktop don't modify the original if you modify the original you're gonna lose it call it glitches now I want to open the glitches with an image editing program and I do recommend paint.net first because it's free secondly because it supports image transparency in layers which is exactly what I need right here the link will be in the description below PS no again it's not my sponsor I do not have a sponsor first let me take a sip of coffee oh yeah I came prepared for this one. Now because this is 8x8, eight eight, we have more space to work with. And let me just make a random selection and this is it. So let's imagine this is our view, okay? This is what the camera is seeing right now. Let's paint everything black. Note again, be sure to click this icon until it turns into squares. If it's not squares, you're gonna have semi-transparent pixels, which is going to ruin everything and glitch everything you know. So be careful. This is our view. This is the camera. This is what the camera's seeing. 
this shape right here. We want to, oh, I opened Discord by mistake. I want to reveal the parts that I want visible. Now, nothing is visible. Again, as I said before, let's, let's make an imperfect shape in the right upper corner of the screen. Like, let's do something like this to make it look like it's glitchy. This is it. That's all I'm gonna do. It's going to hide everything, which is the black part, and it's going to reveal only these bits. Actually, I should have drawn this shape on a different layer. This is one layer, and this is the bottom layer. So if we want to save this, make the background layer invisible because we don't need those. Go to save as. I'll just go to desktop glitches underscore items, a PNG file. That's also important because PNG is a file format which supports transparency, and we definitely need that for this mechanism. So save, click OK, flatten the image, and now press Ctrl plus Z. Just so you undo the flatten thing and you get to keep your layers with the background because we're gonna need this in the future. But the image has already exported. So this glitches items is already here and it's a PNG image. Now import a new item, call it glitch one underscore hide because we're going to hide the bits we don't need. Now browse for the image, glitches underscore items. And now because we used a 16 by 16, eight by eight, items horizontally should be eight by eight. This makes the squares twice is large which is why we had that many space to work with if you want to understand how this mechanic works click the eye corner now because it is linked to an advanced weapons tutorial and I explained it at the very start of the video. It's useful stuff to know, just saying. Lock the glitch one hide onto the glitch one and uh, I want to find it because I can't see it. Where's my item? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Change the item to be the first one, which is the one we just drew. My bad. <laughs> we didn't select it yet. Now turn around 180 degrees and make it cover up. Oh, as you see, I've drawn it unproportionately. So let's try to position this in the center or something. I think this this would do. Glitch one should be uh, hidden from the timeline so we don't see that. And this is what the main camera is seeing right now. This is what should be looking at before. So this is what the main camera is seeing. Let's try to minimize the stretch here. I would say this is perfect. And let's do this. Let's position. So this part will be visible. Let's turn down the Z be exactly zero. Now it's glitching. Like this is called Z depth fighting. This is a nasty glitch and you can avoid it simply by moving them because they're both in the same space and they're fighting for attention. So let's move it backwards a bit, which I see up here is a negative value. So let's go for negative 0.01, just enough to stop the glitching. And as I see here, it's not aligned. So let's, let's align it. This glitch one, plane. I named it so you know what it is. This is a plane with the camera texture. This is the plane, this is the camera which is invisible, and this is the item which hides what we don't need. Let's put the plane camera's render depth to 2, and let's put the glitch hide render depth to 1. What happens now? Well, let's lower down the alpha and see. Wait a minute, nothing has changed. Or has it? I can move this now, and this part of the camera <laughs> is glitching. Yes, I can't believe that worked. I've planned it well. So, okay, what's going on here? What is this sorcery? What am I doing to explain it simply? Imagine there's a screen in front of my eyes and this screen is showing me what's in front of me. But I'm not really looking at what's in front of me. I'm looking at the screen which is displaying what's in front of me. I hope you're following this. And now I've used an item to only show these bits of the screen. The upper bits are the screen. The rest is an actual image. I've limited the screen to only display on the upper areas of the image. The rest is my normal vision. And this is the screen. These bits up here, these little glitchy bits are everything that the main camera is seeing from the plane. The rest down here is the actual view. I'm, I'm seeing through this plane. So this is an interesting effect by itself. How trippy does this look like? Imagine if I just do this and just rotate slightly. This is a pretty cool glitch as it is. Not gonna lie, I love it so far. This is the first bit. But now we're forgetting a very important component. Let me sip my coffee first. It's a very good coffee. All right, the important component here, I'm not crazy, I swear, is the camera effects. Yes, that's still a thing. HD render this, uh, go to the camera. The depth of field, range down to zero. Depth of field, increase the blur. There is a new fringe option, which is why I said we need the newest millimeter version, 1.2.2. And let's just increase that a bit. But what if I apply the separate glitching kind of effect to the other camera? Blur everything, put the range in the fade size to zero, blur everything. I'm good at messing stuff up. If I come back to my main camera, this is what it sees. And the plane here, oh, I'm getting lags. Warning though, you'll get a lot of lags if you use this method. And you can delay the cameras individually. So let me explain again. I'm getting lost to my own words. I really want you to follow because this is amazing. This is... There is a camera with bits of the screen up in the corner, right? The rest is normal vision. And this main camera is having the fringe effect, which glitches everything. 
but this screen is having a separate fringe effect which, which glitches everything even further in this area with a different value and then it's moved so it's glitching the image itself altogether. This is what's really happening. This is one thing and now we have to redo this several times to get multiple kinds of glitches. Click the reflect, click this icon to get a new reflect on the timeline, put it onto main camera, name it glitch2 underscore plane, do the glitch1, let's copy the scale, copy the position so we don't mess with it too much, paste the position, paste the scale, the custom rotation point should be brought down as always, but now this one is being hidden like the previous one, no biggies, let's put it a bit closer, like so, this is the previous one, this one is closer than the previous one, and let's make a new camera, call this camera, glitch2 camera, lock it onto the plane, put it to 0, 0, texture of the plane should be the glitch2. If you apply the texture in the library, you wouldn't be able to pick from the cameras, that's why I did this. So this is the second one, now I'm gonna draw a separate item for the second one. Make your background invisible, file, save as, glitch items, PNG, again PNG, save it, yes, okay, flatten, undo, perfect, file, new item, bras for the image, bras for the glitches item, again, 8x8 eight eight because that's the texture we use, okay, replace it, yes, because we've updated it, we want to replace it, change and select the second image, which is this one, perfect, uh, call it glitch2 underscore hide, lock it on the glitch2 underscore plane, this sounds very complex, even though it's not, I promise it is not. Uh, let's cover it up again, turn it around 180 degrees again because I want the glitch to be in the lower areas. And it's Z-Depth fighting again, so let's put it minus 0.01 back again. Now this is tricky because this plane has a render of 2 and the height has a render of 1. They don't go below 0 so they don't glitch, you have to know the previous tutorials again. This plane is closer, which means it has to have a higher render depth or else it's gonna mess with the lower one. So let's put this to 5 or 6 or so and put the height to 4. The gap is significant, which is okay. If I lower the alpha here, watch what happens. One. <laughs> What's going on again? Okay, plane needs to have a brightness of flat. And now if I do this, this is still here, all right? Let's move this second plane a bit. And as you see, we have our own separate little glitch effect. We have two glitches in one area. Let's do this. This looks glitchy enough, look. Imagine moving the cam- oh my god, I gotta do a render of this. I gotta do a render and I'm gonna play it at the beginning of the video just to get your attention to see that this is a legit glitch. Okay, yeah, if you want to animate this glitch appearing and disappearing, mess with the blur on both of them. And these planes should also be mess messing with the position. So start off from the default position, the one we said at the beginning where it covers naturally, where you don't even see the glitches, then mess with the blur and with the position to do like this is and come back to the start. This is basically all you need to do, and the glitches work perfectly fine. This is amazing. Like if this camera suddenly does this, what happens to the main camera then? Well, let me do this, and uh, what happens? As individual glitches are turning around because the bottom camera is moving and it, there's a different projection on the plane. Let me do something real quick. But if you want an effective glitch, you should make quick actions, appear violently and disappear quickly. I'm gonna try harder for the animation where this camera goes around and suddenly just glitches and goes, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna play it right now. Well guys, there you have it. I'm honestly pretty excited about this idea. I like the fact that it was voted so fast because this is a tutorial which I genuinely like. It's a glitch effect, like I can Power. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned a thing or two. Again, you can show support by hitting that And also, like, you know, you know what I mean, right? Also, divided for April 17th, I am promoting it. I'm promoting it super hard because it's a big project and I want you all at the premiere. We can all watch it live together. Thank you for watching. Now put this thing to use. Stay sharp.